The Far Cry franchise is just about the most oxymoronic video game series alive right now, right up there with Final Fantasy. It's a non-linear series of games that have nothing to do with one another. Their connections are tenuous fan theory fodder at best, and its developer history is almost equally vacuous. And yet, Far Cry is also a reliable classical staple. One of these games comes out about every other year, and they're beginning to all look, sound, and play the same. Despite the only real thread connecting them all being that you first-person shoot in heavily forested areas. But despite the rules it does stick to, it's a franchise where developers can, and have, seemingly gotten away with whatever the hell they want. The last time a Far Cry veered away into spin-off territory for the $30 four-hour long Blood Dragon, everyone thought it was a joke at first. But it wasn't a joke, they actually went through with it and made it. So with the IP being as loose as it is, the Far Cry franchise should never become a place where good ideas go to die. But now that's dangerously close to being the case after playing Far Cry Primal. Primal is Far Cry, but in 10,000 BC. And that's weird. That's crazy. They had to come up with a video game for a time before sniper rifles and bloodthirsty mutants, before diamond conflicts and diabolical dictators, before guns and swords and dungeons and dragons, and as you look at the paths marked on the map but not visible on the ground, this is a time even before roads. And at first, I was simply overwhelmed by one repeating thought. Wow, they actually went and did it. Some guy in some Ubisoft office actually shut everyone up during a meeting and said, guys, guys, let's make Far Cry happen during the Stone Age. And apparently he didn't get thrown out the window. They spent millions of dollars making AAA priced cutscenes of dirty cavemen looking at you and saying unga bunga while English subtitles explain what's going on, except they actually took it all kind of seriously and had a university team approximate Neolithic languages to make sure these characters look, sound, and act like how people might have actually been like back then. I really wasn't expecting to enjoy the story scenes of this game as much as I did. The happy outcome of setting a game story in the Stone Age is that simpler times mean simpler archetypes. The whole story unfolds thusly. Your tribe got split up, so go and find them. Go on an adventure, that's it. That's the whole deal. For starters, that's a light enough framework for me to actually follow, plus the language barrier means that every character's visual design and body acting has to convey their character just as much as their words do. Each tribal specialist you go out to find has more than enough personality to carry their scenes, so believe it or not, somehow the cutscenes in this game turned out to be really fun to watch. But I'm not beyond admitting that a lot of that fun is just from the novelty value of this strange, strange setting. Speculating and learning about this period of history is fun, plus it's all dolled up to the level of spectacle that only a AAA video game can do. Your home base is this idyllic little yurt village full of tiny little intricate details and busy NPC adults and kids that run through fun little idle animations, but then at some point you actually have to play the game. Which is when my dominating thoughts steered away from, wow, they actually went and did it, to, huh. Well, they didn't have to try very hard to make it work. Far Cry Primal's big issue is that it's really just a couple healthy doses of professional production values above a total conversion mod of Far Cry 4. Of course, you have no guns, but you do have bows, which work pretty much exactly how they used to. So do a lot of the same sound effects, UI systems, and animations. The underlying engine tech is all carried straight over from a modern day FPS shoot 'em up, which means that while projectiles handle just fine, the uncharacteristic focus on melee combat without a block button has you swinging weapons that don't feel heavy nor responsive. What might have looked fine from sniping bad guys from a mile away looks like jank up close. There's a lack of convincing animation in a lot of places, from smashing away rock cover to trading blows. And since you have no block or dodge button, you have to do these weird sidestep jumping maneuvers to avoid damage, and it's just not graceful. But all that talk about combat and UI betrays the wonderful potential this idea had for the prospect of fun edutainment or virtual tourism. Although this time period is borderline virgin territory for games, it has been used here as a base for a campy action movie adventure above all else. Which is fine in theory, and also really shouldn't have surprised me in retrospect. The idea of a prehistoric period piece is something that's been used in movies for decades, both for fun and for serious. In fact, the game's use of an antagonistic enemy tribe of cannibals for its human fodder mirrors 1981's Quest for Fire. In Far Cry Primal, the cannibalistic orcish Udam tribe all happen to have these wide faces and large noses that look way different from the other tribes, which might mean they're Neanderthals? Which actually was hinted at in a developer interview. 
Which begs the question, and this is why this setting is fun, is it still cannibalism if they're eating a different species or subspecies of human than that of themselves? Anyways, the timeline for that doesn't add up because the Neanderthals would have been extinct by this game, and it's just distracting me from saying that Far Cry has been having a weird fetish since number three for the whole ancient tribal warrior shtick. Getting thrown back in time into an actual tribe of hunter-gatherers is probably what Jason Brody and AJ Gale were daydreaming about before going on their wacky zany violence vacations. So it's not actually that far-fetched of a concept, but that necessity that Far Cry Primal even be a Far Cry game is what really sets it back. Except they did borrow a couple features from The Witcher 3. You get a story recap every time you boot it up, and there are Witcher senses. You press a button to highlight every interactive item on the whole screen and you'll never want to turn it off. And it's really quite amazing how people way back in the Stone Age already figured out how the Ubisoft sandbox game formula works. Instead of climbing towers to unlock chunks of minimap, you climb hills with bonfires on them. You first person shoot, you lightly sneak, you sandbox explore, it is Far Cry without guns. And a whole lot more crafting recipes in their place. So much so that grinding your way through them is almost the main motivation of the whole game. All that lofty promise of exploring an unexplored time and place and learning about prehistoric history is really just a second priority underneath getting you to fill out all these checklists. Endless screens of checklists, as far as the eye can see. And I really wonder how long Ubisoft sandbox games can keep this act up. Damn near every action you do feeds into a list of greater actions that render individual moments fruitless in relation to the whole. Get into a fight with a predator and it can be killed and skinned for parts for your checklists, or tamed and turned into friendly NPCs for a different checklist. Even the day-night cycle isn't just for immersion's sake. Every new day restocks a stash of auto-producing crafting items whose output increases with captured outposts and bonfires. Animal parts, as always, are used to increase equipment carrying capacity. Which makes me wonder where this early cutscenes ordeal over praying over every kill goes. It shows our heroes being these beautiful, nature-loving spiritualists, and then you actually get into the game and you have more than enough carrying space for new animal skins, and all these upgrades create overwhelming demand for new animal skins, so you're really just prioritized to ruthlessly loot every single animal that moves, while snatching up any hard wood and soft stones lying around on the way. You just connect the dots on the minimap on your way to the next quest. Oftentimes, you don't even need to look at the screen, just hold the loot button and focus on the minimap. This greater volume of abstract menu-based out-of-body crafting experiences means that the whole system makes even less sense than previous games. Arrows require one piece of wood and no stone or metal for the arrowhead. You can pause combat in the middle of a fight and craft up a new quiver of arrows in an instant. Easy peasy. Far Cry Primal's greatest sin is that it's boring. It could be worse, it could be an unplayably glitchy mess, or it could have gotten stuck in development hell and not come out at all. At least we got a game, but we got a game whose radical setting is wasted on an utterly conventional design. The interesting challenges that the Stone Age could have presented were sacrificed in the name of Ubisoft's sandbox ubiquity, as well as an augmentation on Far Cry 4's HUD assistance. So much HUD assistance that it makes the world even hard to see. Primal's overgrown vegetation, noisy shadows, and oversized trees turn any given screen into a brown mess of camouflaged people and creatures. Ubisoft provided me with a PS4 code, and keeping my bearings on this map with an analog stick, especially when it came time to pick every single corpse clean after a battle, was never easy. Combine that with a HUD full of floating markers and objective reminders, and the game turns Stone Age survivalism into Digital Age information overload. You've got your GPS, your Photoshop night vision, your augmented reality X-ray Batman vision, and even some real-time aerial satcom reconnaissance and bombardment. And all that abstract artificial assistance just makes the game too easy. So easy that it's boring. Where are the challenges inherent in its systems? Where's the thrill of gathering up all these rare crafting ingredients when clear map icons and abundant placement practically funnel them straight into your pouch? What's threatening about a crocodile hidden in the swamp when it's glowing bright yellow and can be spotted a mile away? What's rare about all these rare ingredients I'm snatching up by the minute? 
At any given moment of gameplay, I have anywhere between 20 and 30 healing items stashed away, so where's the threat in the combat? Far Cry Primal isn't a story about surviving the Stone Age so much as it's a story about how great video game ideas die. It's the story of that one guy at Ubisoft who shut everyone up during a pitch meeting only to get shouted down later in the name of deadlines and streamlining production pipelines. It's a story of design compromises and corporate miscommunications, as evidenced by the latest controversy over them reusing the map layout from Far Cry 4. What could have been a cool connective easter egg, further hinted at by mentions of Kyrat and Pagan Min in Primal's fictional tie-in blog, is spoiled by whoever decided to say the game's setting was Central Europe. These guys insist it's Europe, these guys insist it's Asia, so which is it? It's a mess of miscommunication and thematic mismatches that's even seen by how they used a car's engine revving whenever you hover over a usable item. Yeah, that, that doesn't fit the theme, that's just confusing. Far Cry Primal overall is confusing. How the hell did a game in such a radically different setting turn out to be this familiar and iterative? For that matter, how the hell is a sequel this iterative, recycled, and spin-off-y a full-length $60 release? It's not a bad game, I, I mean I found it boring, but it's at least good at getting you into a time-wasting trance of character progression and map uncovering. I don't recommend it, but if you ever do find yourself owning Far Cry Primal, at least try playing with a bunch of the HUD elements turned off. It's not easy to just flick them on and off on a whim, the expert mode doesn't actually change a whole lot, and there's only one save slot? How the hell does that even still happen? But the point is, on its default developer-suggested options and difficulty, Primal just plays it way too safe. Any illusion of bravery or creativity that you might have been sold by its new setting are only skin deep. 